Hey, this is Daniel Grove with Daniel Grove Photo. I recently created a really cool sci-fi scene that I thought was pretty photorealistic and it was all made in Blender, Eevee. Yeah, Eevee, I never use Eevee, especially not for photoreal stuff. But this came out really good, it's relatively simple. I think it'll be a good opportunity to teach a bunch of different techniques. Uh, so this is the image that I saw that inspired me originally. It was sent to me by a friend. I was planning a composite photo edit for a uh, sci-fi wedding that I did. And she said, hey, what about this hallway? And I was like, yeah, it's cool. And later I came back and I said, you know what? Just for fun, just for practice, I'm gonna try and recreate this in Blender. Um, and I got some pretty cool results and I learned a few things on the way as well. So let's get to the tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to make this super cool hallway. Okay, so let's start by making the floor panels. I chose to make in just a basic square grid. So we're gonna start with the default cube, which I have by default deleted, ironically. Um, so shift A, mesh, and made a cube. If you press the period key on your numpad, it zooms in and centers your selected object. I'm going to press tab in edit mode, S, Z, to scale it on the Z axis, and just make it a thin uh, plate, like so. And then I'm going to bevel the top. So in face select mode, select that top face and control B, drag your mouse out a little bit and add a few additional faces. If you use your mouse wheel, you can easily do that or you can use plus and minus on your keyboard. So there, okay, with that bevel done, I'm gonna select this top face. I'm gonna use control plus to grow my selection to just the very, uh, just the bevel part. And then I'm going to actually scale this in just a little bit. Um, but not the bottom part. I know it's going to make kind of a pyramidal shape, but that's okay. That's so that when this thing gets repeated with the array to make a bunch of floor tiles, there's actually a bit of a legit crease in between, you know, these, these pieces, um, which just adds a little bit more to the realism and detail of the floor. So let's make this into a floor. So uh, go to your wrench uh, tab here, the modifiers and make an array. And I want to go, I guess I'll go this way along the X just because it's the easy, it's, it's the default direction. And I don't know how many, let's do like 40. That's pretty far, let's maybe do 20. And then we can do another array to go uh, the other direction, which will be uh, zero on the X and this time one on the Y. And then we can do maybe uh, six panels Y. This is essentially our floor panel pressing number pad seven to get an above view. Let's turn on our snap to grid, and then let's turn on absolute grid snap. This helps things actually be centered on the grid line. And let's move this over like that. There we go. So we got six panels wide and 20 deep, easily changeable over here if we need to make the room larger, um, but that's good for now. Now let's make the side panel with the lights and then we'll make the walls. So shift A, make a cube. Uh, numpad seven, let's move it over here. Okay, change your point of origin to individual, which means the center of the cube. Tab in edit mode, S, Y, 0.5, enter. We just scaled it on the Y in half. Get add a tab or add a edit mode and put it right there. Let's make this um, smaller. So tab again, S, Y, just to shrink it down a little bit. Um, I might shrink maybe this part down. And we're gonna make this whole thing uh let's see let's make it two let's make it twice as long so a to select all s x two there we go so we move this into place again and don't get don't do this in edit mode or you'll be shifting the mesh around we want to keep that origin point where it where it originally was so there and then we can repeat this with an array and instead of 20 we need probably what 10 yep because it's twice as long as these floor panels and we're going to mirror this to the other side so go to mirror modifier and we're going to mirror this along the green axis which is y turn off x but we want it to jump across over here so let me see if this thing works if i do the mirror object as a floor panel yeah that's not going to work so we need to make an empty shift a empty plane axis let's put it over here and now we can mirror this based on the empty so is we go because we only have like three objects, we just do that empty um, there. So wherever this empty is, it's going to mirror it based on that. So we'll just keep in this keep this in the center for now, and that's good. And we're going to make a hole or a little uh, like a light panel area here. So with this top face selected in edit mode, I'm going to press I, and maybe like that, 
And then I'm going to E to extrude it inwards. Oh, my, my snap to grid is still on. So let me undo that. Turn off our snap to grid. E to extrude. And I want to make these, uh, these corners uh, rounded. So I'm just going to grab that one little face in there. See that guy right there? And then Shift G, select by length. So any edge that is that same length in this mesh is selected, which should be just these four. Yeah, good. So now we can bevel this. Control B, add a few faces, make it nice and round. There we go. Awesome. So this face right here is going to be the one with the light emission texture on it. When we get to the material stage, we'll take care of that. Okay, now let's make the wall. So Shift A, make another cube. This is going to be twice as tall. So S, S, Z, so scale on Z, number two, enter. And it doesn't need to be that thick. So let's just make it like a kind of like a tile like the floor was. Uh, turn back on our snap to grid, move this over here, and move this up right there. And I'm going to make this kind of like a, like a brick pattern almost. So in edit mode, I'm going to actually do the same thing I did with the floor panels and do a slight bevel. And then shrink it in just a little bit with the S for scale. Make sure you're on individual right, right there. Okay, so we got that kind of pyramidal shape to give some nice gaps. And in between the panels, press A to select all. I'm going to try numpad three. Oh, actually, numpad one gives me the side view, which is looking at the wall because it's from the side. So shift D to duplicate and move it over here and then go up to that middle position. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to manually build. Now we just get to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. So shift D, Z, move it down there. Now press A again to select this. Shift D, Z, move it up there. And depending on how high you need your ceilings, you know, do you can do it as many times as you need. I'm just going to keep it here. That's definitely too tall, but we do need to have kind of that cutoff. Uh, so this is our singular mesh here. We're going to array this down the hallway. So array, do, 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 tip 10. And then we're going to mirror this across the other side of the hallway, just like we did with those little light, those light strips. So mirror modifier. Can you tell I like to do as little work as possible? <laughs> I really do. Some call it lazy, I call it efficient. Awesome, so we're done with the basic part of the hallway. You do need, oh, let's make the, the ceiling panels, um, the ceiling pieces, so shift A. Yet again, another cube. Let's move it up here. Not sure about the height yet. I mean, if these squares are square feet, then you know, this hallway is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 feet wide. And then height, I like to do like nine feet for a height. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, look at that, that was perfect. Uh, so we'll leave it right there. Um, tab, S, Y, you can make it stick out. It doesn't have to be perfectly measured for this part. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate this. So Shift D, X, move one down and scale this secondary, the secondary panel, make it really skinny uh, vertically. So S, Z, like that and move it up right there. By the way, if you hold shift um, while you're using snap, it kind of snaps on smaller increments instead of the bigger ones. So that's all you got to do for the ceiling panel. We're just going to duplicate this a few times down the hallway. So add modifier array. Let me guess 10. Yes, it was 10. All right, cool. So this is a lot. This is actually wider than my original design, but that's okay. It gives a, a, a sense of space and you know, vastness to it. Um, so that's great. Let's make that back wall. I'm just going to duplicate this, um, this wall and put one back there. So shift D, uh, X, let's get rid of the mirror modifier RZ 90. Oh, the other way you can add a, uh, negative by just hitting the negative or the minus button. There we go. Seven for above view. And I'm going to snap it into place. Let's see if that looks okay. looks a little weird with that being covered up. Oh, you know what, if we shift it down there. Ooh, look, the lines line up. That's cool. You may not like that. Maybe go down like that. There we go, to keep up the brick kind of offset thing going on. Cool. Um, there we go, I was looking above the ceiling. That's above the ceiling. That's the second floor. <laughs> Let's actually delete some of these extra cubes here. So actually those right there, just delete faces. Delete faces. I like how Blender remembers what you had selected last. Sometimes that really saves my butt when I have a complicated selection. And uh, yeah, I don't have to do it again. Uh, oh, by the way, we don't need this extra stuff. So probably go down to five, I think. 
five, yeah, cool. Okay, now I ended up using Eevee for my final render and my project, and that's really weird for me. Those of you who follow me, I rarely use Eevee. I've used Eevee on my Tron thing, on a few other stylized things that do come out great, but it's because Eevee is good at a few select things and it chops off the unnecessary stuff like ray tracing, which I love ray tracing uh, for many reasons, most of all just realism, but we're kind of sacrificing that for speed and functionality. So lighting is a little different and it's not gonna do what you may expect if you're used to ray tracing like I am, but, it's, but we still use the same light objects to light our scenes. So shift A, add a, an, add an area light, which I love this one, probably my favorite light uh, object. Now let's size it up to fit up into these gaps. So let's do rectangle and then uh, Y, make it pretty wide. Uh, there we go. And uh, X, and let's make it like dot nine. So it's a little bit thinner than our little cavity we've made there. Let's move it up, move it over. There, I think that's in the right place. Let's go to X-ray view with wireframe and we can really see if it's placed right. Oh, I don't have X-ray on, there we go. So yeah, it's in there, you can make it a little bit wider. There we go, cool. And as far as height, is it up high enough? I can't, no, it's not. It's level with this bottom face. We want it to be up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna turn off my snap, GZ, and put it just below. Let's go to object mode. It's kind of hard to tell where things are. Yeah, there we go. So I'm way, way up in there. There, just below it, awesome. Now, unfortunately, we can't use the array modifier on a light object, which would be super cool and handy, but we can use uh, the linked duplicate trick. So let's go back to X-ray mode so we can see stuff, maybe seven for above view, and uh, turn on our snap again. We're gonna use Alt-D instead of Shift-D, which makes an unlinked duplicate. Alt-D makes a linked duplicate, which shares the exact object data, such as these set settings over here. So Alt-D, and we're gonna move it right there. Good, now we can repeat this step with Shift R. There. Now, because these are linked duplicates, uh, any change that I make to them, it's going to be sent across all the objects. Oh man, this looks so good in Cycles right now. I haven't even done any materialing, this looks awesome. It's a shame we're not using Cycles in this video, but you know what, on your own time, make a Cycles version, render it, and send them to me, because I would love to see that. So let's just chop off the ray tracing. Oh. Rough, that's real rough. <laughs> uh, so let's turn up the light power. There we go, not not bad, right? It's kind of PlayStation <laughs> 2, maybe. Um, <laughs> okay, somehow when I do my duplicating of my area light, I must have had a downward direction, probably because the snap did something weird and it just went all the way down. So I'm going to <laughs> delete all of those, except for the first one, redo that. Maybe if I do it from a side angle, it'll be a little bit more reliable. So let's try that again. I'm in wireframe mode and I have X-ray uh, on, which is this little button here. Um, and let's try that again. So Alt D, Y, uh, see, do you see how it jumped down? That's what happened. I didn't specify an axis. When you specify an axis, like I just did by pressing the letter X, which is down the hallway, it locks it in. It can only snap on the X axis. Whereas before it was going down and over. Okay, so there's that, Shift R. Cool. Now it should look, there we go, that's proper. It was, the light was like going down <laughs> as the hallway went back. Um, so like I said, because they're linked, any change we make to one of the lights, any of the lights, goes across all of them and I just love that. So if you wanna give this a slight color tint, which I usually do, I almost never leave my lights at pure white because it's almost impossible to get a pure white light in most settings. Unless it's like a photographic quality light in some studio, it's usually a little, you know, a little green, a little yellow, you can give it some atmosphere like that, some color, kind of like color grading, just up front, like if lighting color grading. So I'm gonna give this a slight blue and cool color to give it kind of a, a creepy feel, industrial feel and cold. Um, and then on the ground, we're going to add some lit pieces uh, with uh, emissions. So let's get to the materialing phase, one of my favorite parts of a project like this. So we're gonna do make a new material on the floor and we're really gonna use this material on everything, the wall and the ceiling. So this is pretty simple. Um, let's just call this, uh, I don't know, paneling. <laughs> as vague as we can get. Let's split our view vertically and change this to the shader editor. 
here we go uh, let's give this a blue a medium blue color there we go cool not too bright not too dark um, we are going to make this metallic so turn that up turn up specular and we're going to play with the roughness by using some image textures so shift a image texture open I have a bunch of textures called surface imperfections you can find these or similar materials all over online if you just look through metal um, PBR textures on any of those free websites that I love that I share online put links down down below um, you can find some really great roughness maps. I'm looking for something kind of smudgy and um, not too distracting, but like a dirty metal surface. So let me see, which one do I want to go with? I'll go with this one because it kind of has some streaks to it. So open image, plug that into the roughness and then make a color ramp to control that roughness more, more exactly. There we go. Now this roughness is just really reflective it's very non-rough right it's it's uh, it's making it too reflective so we can affect that by changing the black point so grab the black hand on the left and make it less black make it some kind of gray i'm going to do dot one two three for that decimal and it's still blurry and reflective uh but not too distracting and let's go ahead and apply uh, these materials to everything one quick way to do that is select uh, your targets which is the walls and the ceiling and then select your source for the material press ctrl l and link materials there we go so it shares that to all the stuff inside and this is really dark so i may want to brighten up this blue maybe desaturate a little bit there we go the darker this texture is the more reflective it is the brighter it will be is the less reflective it will be so if i i'm previewing this by the way by using node wrangler but I'm going to go back to here. If I make this like really just everything is pretty much on the wider end, you know, it's from like gray to white, then it's pretty flat and um, less uh, shiny like a mirror. And that looks good right here. But when we render, it may look a little different. Now, I did notice that this image is being like majorly tiled <laughs> like that's terrible. Uh, this is this is from PS2 to PS1 days or maybe before. So let's play with the scaling here. Um, I'm going to select all these meshes tab into edit mode press a for all as you can see this is the only modeling i've done <laughs> square square squares long square and boom we have a room so let's go to our uv editor i'm going to unwrap this a little bit differently so u to unwrap and let's do cube projection i think all the like this the areas remains um, intact so the surface area of each square is accurate to what it is so a we can press s to scale it down if we want the images to be larger per face or scale it up to medium or small. We don't want that. We want less tiling. So let's do that. And then we're going to play with the array modifier. There's actually a really neat trick that you may not know about, and it will shift the UVs. So let's go to this first. I'm just going to go to the ground, expand the UV, and we can play with V, which will basically shift it over. And then maybe shift this one like that, just so they're not repeating. You know, every array is not the same now. So maybe we need to shift it over some more. There we go. It's not as bad as it was before. And then this one as well, expand this UV, play with these guys. You can shift it that way. There you go. That is looking really nice. Now on X and Y, it's essentially randomized, but really it's just shifted. Let's do the walls as well. So the first one, do that and that. Good. That looks pretty good right there. In the mirror modifier also has these, um, these sliders. So that's great. Let's do the back wall UV. We only have one. There we go. Cool. I can't tell this is one image like that looks great. I can't see any tiles, anything like that. Um, so I'm, I'm a happy camper. Oh, the ceiling too. Oh, that looks bad. It looks really bad. Shifty shift, shifty shift. Great. Done. <laughs> All right. So let's get back into normal material. So preview the, uh, the shader there. Again, we can't see these details right now, but when we render, um, they, they will, they'll stand out a little bit if we get our lighting right. And you, of course, do need to play with these values. It may be too pale. We may need to darken some things. You can even, you know, flip them to invert them. You find that that gives you better results. If you move things closer together, there's essentially more contrast like that. Now we can really see how the light plays off of the grimy wall. Make it more subtle if you spread them out. But the closer they are, there is a lot of contrast. That looks cool. If you're going for an old warehouse, you want that. But if it's a little bit more newer and cleaner, then, you know, spread them out a little bit. Awesome. Okay. 
Cool, cool, cool. Oh, let's make our ground piece here. We're going to apply that same material of paneling. And uh, let me see, go into material preview mode. Tab and edit. We still have that face selected. Make a new material. Click new. Let's name it floor light assigned. There we go. We just assigned that floor light material to that face. And click on principle and just press the letter E. It skips up to emission. And we're gonna give this a warm color because the, the ceiling and the room is, is cool. We're gonna give this a warm color. And I don't know, maybe a four, power of four. Okay, uh, we haven't set our camera up. So let's get a nice view. Sorry, I always do this. There we go. Let's get a nice view that we like. And we're gonna set our camera up there. So uh, control alt zero, we'll grab whatever your active camera is and snap it to your 3D view. If you don't like how it looks, we can play with the millimeters of the lens to make it like a zoom lens real tight in or a really wide, wide lens and keep it at 22. That's pretty wide. And then of course we can use G to move it around. Turn off your snap. There we go. Um, if you want to give this sense of size, you may want to put the camera low and have it angled upwards a little bit like that. Um, but remember if this is coming from a camera, then you want to put it at eye level, which would be around five feet off the ground, depending on, you know, who who's talking. Um, so if I do this, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, it needs to be up right around there ish five to six feet. There we go. So camera RR to freely rotate it. And yeah, cool. Okay, so let's render this real quick and see how it looks. Awesome, looks pretty cool. I can see the smudges, they're a bit much. I may wanna turn them down so this room doesn't look dirty, but it just doesn't look super perfect. So yeah, let's do that by um, going to our shader. Maybe spread these apart. Just That might be all we need to do right there. Um, what else is going on? These look great, but they're a little bit big. I want them to be like smaller and not as like obnoxious. Um, so let's go to our floor, our light piece. The light, the light panel is selected, so I'm going to do Control Plus, and let's see if we can scale it along the normals because this is at a weird angle because of how I did this. See, um, so let's see if we can do this. S X. Yeah, good. It's maintaining the normal direction, uh, which is great. So right here, and let's do it. Let's change it to be like that, thinner. Awesome. Let's re-render that so less smudgy and light should be smaller. Yeah, that looks nice. That's great. It's weird how scale affects just room stuff. I do actually want this room to be taller. Uh, I just feel like it's too short. It's not, it's, it's not scary. <laughs> um, so let's move it up maybe three feet. So GZ three. And let's see if our walls need to change. Ooh, I think our walls are literally just, look at that puzzle. ka -chink. Awesome. And we, we should probably move our lights up as well. So you can grab all your lights here in GZ three as well. Awesome, so they're right up where they need to be. Let's do a little compositing to add some glow. Uh, so compositor, turn it on. Over here, we're gonna use two nodes, Shift A, the glare one, and then Shift A, type in uh, lens distortion. Great, so put the dispersion at dot zero two, change this to uh, fog glow, keep it at medium, put the threshold at, I don't know, dot like four or something. And let's uh, save this, and then we're going to make another slot. So this is in slot one. If we press J to make uh, an empty slot two. There's nothing rendered here. So press F12 to render to slot two. That allows us to jump back and forth between slot one and two. So if we press J, that's slot one. That's slot two. The ceiling is up higher. That's, yeah, <laughs> looks weird because the reflections. And I can actually see a gap <laughs> on that back wall right there. Let's see if we can move that up one. GZ. Actually, you need to be two. There we go. Awesome. Now, in my scene, I had a really cool uh, safe door built in the back. I did find an image of a legit safe that inspired me to make that. So you don't have to do this part, but um, I think I might do some modeling for that vault door because that makes it a story piece. Anyone could make an empty room like this. It really is not a lot. There's nothing happening. You know, there's nothing interesting, nothing making me want to like think about what would it be like to be in this room? Well, why does this room exist? But if we put a vault door there, you now instantly there is a few possibilities. You know, there could be a room full of gold. There could be a room full of alien spaceships. There could be something magical behind it. We just don't know. And that's a great story piece because it makes you wonder. 
Um, unless you're telling a specific story and there's like a script or something like that. If it's vague, that's fun because the viewer gets to make up the story. So I'm going to make that vault door in the back based on the reference image that I found. Now to clear up this view, because we got these annoying ceiling lights, we can actually turn off just the visibility of the lights. So there we go. Awesome. And this is also really cool because you can turn off selectability. So like I can no longer accidentally select the lights and move them. And that's cool. But I just want to actually want to hide them. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so uh, let's go into our uh, hallway view, which is control numpad three. And we're going to start with a cylinder. So shift A, cylinder, and give it a lot of faces. Let's do 120. GZ to move it up. R, Y, 90, enter to rotate at 90 degrees. We got to put it at the back of the hallway. So just move it down there. There we go. Period to zoom into it. And let's size it up a lot. So S, I imagine it being about this high off the ground. That's pretty big and it's really thick. So S, Y. Oh, we're still in normal mode here, global. Now S, X, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to solo this by pressing the forward slash on my numpad. That just makes this alone visible and anything else I add. If I press it again, it goes back to full view. Okay, so grabbing this uh, front face right here, I'm going to do a little bit of a bevel, just a one segment bevel. I for inset, E to extrude. Oh, turn off our snap. You usually do not want snap on when you're modeling, especially in a hard surface modeling. Okay, I for inset, E to extrude, bevel that. I for inset, E. S to scale that down. There we go. Got a nice shape there. Let's make the hinge that holds it. I'm going to set my 3D cursor right here. So shift S cursor to selected. Shift A make a cube and move it over here. And I'm going to use auto mirror, which is a really nice free plugin. That's in part of Blender now. Um, so go to edit and then Z because it's up and down and press auto mirror. There we go. So now it's automatically mirrored. Oh, but I forgot to turn off use clip. So I got to undo. Turn off use clip. Z auto mirror. There we go. Now I can do that. All right. So this is um, kind of a thin piece that's wrapped around uh, some large, uh, a large joint. And it needs to line up with the front right there like that. We're going to make this go up and then over. And there is another joint that goes right down the center like that. Awesome. I'm going to grab this face and shift D Z to move it up. Extrude it out this way. And then grab this face and move this back to the back wall. E to extrude, make a little segment so that we can grab this and extrude it like that. That this is part of the uh, wall mounted brace or joint. You can even make two of these if you wanted to look really strong like that. And there's going to be a cylinder down the middle. Okay. You can also copy this. Control L to grab it. Shift D X, or actually Y, and put this uh, as the part that will be centered right on the vault door. S Z to make it a little bit shorter, and we we need to go to X-ray mode to move these out to the front. Maybe shrink them a little bit. There we go. So that's mounted to the vault door. And then, yeah, there we go. Line it up. Okay. So this is super blocky. looks like Minecraft. Well, let's make it look nice and round. So we're going to grab um, all of these edges here. That one, that one, these are going to be beveled to fit the curvature of the cylinder um, piece that we're going about to make. Okay. So control B. Add lots of segments and there we go. See, this look nice and smooth. Now let's add our cylinder. So again, with our three cursor set to the vault door, shift S there, shift A cylinder. Oops, I did an icosa. There we go, cylinder. And numpad seven for above view. Let's line this up so it actually makes sense. Awesome. It's a little thick, it's popping through. 
Oh, no, it's good. There we go. Cool. Looks great. And um, we can uh, Alt-D, because we're going to add some little details. Right there, numpad 7. Let's make sure it's lined up. Oh, it's not. There we go. Cool. I like details. They're important and stuff, I guess. Um, Shift-R to add a loop cut. And then we can actually control B, bevel these like that. We can grab these loop cuts and turn them into rings pretty easily. This is one of my hard surface tricks on my most popular video, hard surface modeling tricks. Control B to bevel these. E enter, S, shift Z. So they're scaling, but not on the Z. And there we go, nice, okay. Let's do a bunch of bolts. So control three to get a flat view that's looking down the hallway. Tab into edit mode. I'm going to set my 3D cursor in the middle. Oh, it already is. Uh, so we're going to, uh, in edit mode, we're gonna add uh, spheres. So UV spheres, and they don't need to be a very high poly, so we can just do this in half. So like 16 and eight, there we go. Move this up right about there. It's gonna shrink down a lot, about that big. And we want this to pop out of the front face because it's essentially a rivet. You can even flatten them a little bit. So S, X, there we go, nice. And we won't see this one, but the other ones we will because we're gonna rotate these and array them all the way around. So um, our 3D cursor is in the middle, that's perfect. Set our pivot point to 3D, type Shift D, R, and let's do um, 10 degrees each. Enter, and then if we did that correctly, we can do Shift R and repeat that step. Do, 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 do. And we don't have to do that key command over and over, just Shift R. Awesome, so that looks nice and strong. Let's grab one of the spheres, Control L, and then Shift G, grab perimeter. That grabs the perimeter of spheres, and that's great. Copy this, but move it in a little bit closer. So Shift D, Enter, and I'm gonna change this to medium point, scale it down, now this also scales down the spheres. As you can see, they're a lot smaller than they were and I don't want that. So we're going to change now to individual origins and now we can scale up the spheres themselves. So let's do maybe a top view with X-ray on. And now we can see, because this is a top view, it's flat. There's no third dimension. So look at this, I can scale them up and literally visually match the size of the old one and the new one, nice. Gotta love consistency. Well, at least I do. Um, oop, this joint thingy is in the way of the bolts. There we go. We could also add some bolts uh, to this joint thingy. That's the technical term. So just grab that sphere, control L, shift D, move it down somewhere over here. And let's move it out. G, X, right there. I don't know why that, that cube disappears when I go to this view. That's really annoying. Shift D, Y there. Grab both of them. Shift D, Z. See if our spacing is good. And there we go. Now when we shade this uh, smooth, it will look nice and uh, high poly. So press W and choose Shade Smooth. And then in your object settings down here, go to Normals and Auto Smooth. There we go. I want to play with that raise it up a little bit because those spheres were really low poly a lot lower than i usually go so that's good we need to do the same to this guy so w shade smooth turn that on and if we add bolts to this we want to make it around 60 degrees as well so there you go so just have fun with that do some bolts over here make it look nice and chunky um let's grab these guys here shift d y move it up here and they're way they're sticking out in the air so let's Move it down the hall with the X axis there. Shift DZ, move these down to there. That's great. Oh yeah, they're not being uh, mirrored. So we can actually select these, Control L. Let's separate this from the cylinder of the locked door by pressing P, Selection. Now they're separate. So we've got the bolts over here. We want to merge this with this because then it'll be mirrored down there. So select the bolts, select the hinges, Control J to join. And voila, we now have bolts mirrored down here. And this is all one mesh. Cool, let's make the opening spindle door thingy, I don't know what it's called. 
um, right around here, Shift S, make a cylinder, rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. There we go, sorry about that, It'll make it a little easier to look at if I go to object mode. E, shrink it down. Just kind of making up this stuff. Whatever looks cool. There we go. And the ring is going to be run here. So uh, select these by holding Alt, Shift S, put our 3D cursor there. Shift A, make a torus. And we can actually rotate it ahead of time there. Make our minor radius pretty thin. So it's a nice, you know, grippable wheel like a steering wheel and let's turn up our poly count a little bit maybe to like 72 it's a nice number and that's good okay uh let's make as uh, some cylinders to connect these like spindles these don't need to be high poly you can just go down to like 16. they do need to be thinner than the actual wheel there we go so that they stick into it like so and we can rotate I feel like three is a good number for this um, so our 3d cursor is already in place for our little radial array trick so shift D R 120 and then shift R to repeat that step awesome let's add a little minor detail here great I love it and if this is too big you know human scale you can shrink it down or make it bigger all right, so tab out of solo mode, or sorry, forward slash out of solo mode. And look at this. We got some wonky um, <laughs> sizing of things. So let's see. Yeah, this stuff is sticking out of the wall. So let's tap into edit mode. I'm going to press um, A to select all. And then I'm going to go into x-ray and deselect these parts. And I'm going to move the rest of it over. So C and hold shift. Look at this. Really easy way to deselect stuff. I love it. But in x-ray mode, it gets the stuff behind. You got to do that. So now we have the stuff that's basically in the wrong place. Go our flat view. Get out of x-ray. And let's just do G, Y, and slide it on over. Very nice. There we go. Oh, it's sticking into the wall. So I think we just need to move everything out a little bit. So with the hinge, the wheel, and the door, G, X. There we go. Just a smidge, just a smidge. Cool, oh, we need a nice um, metal texture to this door. So material, name it vault, turn metallic all the way up, specular all the way up, roughness down. Oh, it's only on the uh, <laughs> the hinge. Oh, I didn't move the hinge forward, gosh darn it. G, X, there, what about this hinge? Did I screw this hinge up too? Yeah, where'd my other hinge go? Oh, there it is. G, Y. There, and then move it forwards. There we go. Okay, we gotta we gotta make this look pretty. So let's um, grab these pieces and then that Control L link material. There we go. All right. And I forgot one little finishing touch to make it look like the original reference is to bevel that edge and bevel that edge, like a lot. There we go. Cool. You can even also bevel this inside edge a little bit to make it nice and organic. Yeah, that's cool. That looks really slick. I like that a lot. Oh, forgot the wheel. Vault door. Look at this. We got two materials. <laughs> well, three, with including the light. Awesome. Now, um, if you want to give some, if you want to tweak this metal a little bit, you can turn up your endostropic effect to give some cool light bending. Um, you can even wrap like a noise texture around it to give it that brushed aluminum metal if you want to, but I'm not going to take time doing that in this tutorial. Um, so let's render this and see what it looks like. Pretty dark. There's not a lot of light on the vault door, so it's not really shining like I'd like to. So let's maybe cheat a little bit and add some lights to shine on the vault door alone. Shift A. Make an area light. Um, where Oh, <laughs> my lights are invisible, so turn them back on. There we go and go back to individual origins there we go okay there let's rotate 
like that and that. I'm going to make two of them. So there is kind of putting over there. And then let's, let's Alt D and make one over here, kind of the opposite. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes imperfect lighting angles give some nice shadows and draws out details in different ways. So cool. And as far, let's go to rendered view so we can see what it's doing. Let's turn the light and brightness up. Awesome. Now, one thing that's weird about lights is that they are invisible from the outside, but they reflect off of surfaces. So this, this view is essentially seeing, if I make this more reflective, that's the square of the light. See those weird floating squares right there. That's the light source that's right here being reflected off of the mirror wall and doesn't look great like that so we can either hide them you know where like this like we where we don't see it but it's still giving light where we want that's great for still renders um, but if you have like an animation it's a little more tricky to do that i'm going to delete one of them there we go what if we change one of these lights like this last one to be like red or something to give like an ominous glow so let's grab these two lights these last two ones and i'm actually going to, to kind of break them off from the connection to the others to so do that go select them go to object relations make single user and then object and data there we go so now let's say if we you know change this one to like red the others aren't but we're actually going to do the opposite so we're going to grab those last two Make it red, and then the other one, that one. Make it red also. There we go, cool. Let's render that, see how that looks. Yeah, it's giving some little red highlights on the door. Let's fix our reflectiveness, because it is way too shiny. And I think there's actually a, a, a scene light here that is shining through some of these cracks, perhaps. So let's delete that light, we don't need that. There we go. What if we make this one red also? Yeah, that's cool or even just like a, a desaturated red. Okay, render that. Whoa, I made the walls way too flat. <laughs> they need to be a little shiny. I'm gonna try desaturating the color. Just no color on the walls, just a gray. Hmm, not bad, I like that. That's pretty cool. We do need some more blue though. I'm gonna make those top lights a little bit more cool. And also stronger from 166 i'll put them at 300 and i'm going to turn down these floor panel lights to two so this is before this is after you can see the lights are a little bit more balanced i darkened the ground lights and i brightened uh and made more blue at the top so there's a lot of cool color temperatures going on here and of course you you know if this is in like warning mode or like lockdown then you need to make everything red or yellow and red and you can give some creepy feels like that Oh, one thing I almost forgot is because we're in EV volume, lighting is a lot faster because there's no samples and ray tracing. So let's make a little volume cube to give some more atmosphere in this room. And you can make it kind of smoky or hazy if you want. So let's do that by adding yet another cube. This just room is literally full of cubes. Uh, there we go. Oh, it's way over here for some crazy reason. I don't know what happened. So if you get that, just press Alt G to reset the location to zeros. And let's size it up to be bigger than the hallway in all directions there just to cover the whole volume <laughs> literally and uh, so the viewport is clean let's do uh visibility or no viewport display set it to wire there we go and now with the material make a new material go up here delete that bsdf shift a and type in vol and do principled volume plug it into volume, not surface. I've done that so many times. And the room goes black because the density is super dense. So let's slowly, oh my gosh, I love that. Slowly holding shift, dial it back. We can even do a little math note to make this easier. Um, plug this into density, change this to divide and make it like divide this number by maybe 10. Now let's do 100. There we go. Just give you some more fine control. Um, you can mix in, you know, noise nodes in here to give actually like shape to the fog. Um, you could make it die off as it goes higher or as it goes lower. If you want like <laughs> fog on the ceiling, um, you could you can make it a 
You can do that, by the way, by using the gradient texture to basically make it fade down as a lower density as it gets higher, but down here is a higher density. Um, so yeah, this shines really nicely with light sources. So this is, this is before right here with no volume. That is with volume. So let's go back and forth. So no volume, volume. Pretty cool. It does kill, you know, kind of the high, the high, the clipping or the highlights of the light, but we can turn it down or up. Um, and you can also make your lights even stronger to kind of compensate for that. And it might glow really nicely. So yeah, there's a little trick there to add some literal atmosphere to your scene. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed following along. I'd love to see y'all's result. If you make something you're proud of, if you change it, make your own version, make it you, send me your renders to my email down below. I really enjoy seeing y'all's work. And if you have any suggestions for topics or techniques or anything like that for Blender, Photoshop, Lightroom, photography, videography, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see more of on my channel. And I will very likely make some of it because about half my videos are from y'all's suggestions. So I thank you guys for all of your feedback and positive words of encouragement. It really means a lot to me. Thanks again for watching this and subscribe and we'll see you soon.